you know, Young Justice Season 3, Episode 11. To them, you're just another freak. Like me. I'm not gonna apologize. So we start off with Victor Stone storming into his dad's lab, angry at how uh, he is never around. Not just that he missed the most recent game, uh, but that he's just always so engrossed in his work. Um, and he, I, I, I uh, forgot to get the name of the guy who's playing Victor here, but he's just, he does it so well. This anger and intensity is just projected perfectly. I mean, kudos to that guy. Who, I mean, who, like, whatever his name is, he just does such a great job here. On his way out, Victor pulls a cord from the big doohickey that Livewire and Shade and the others stole a couple episodes ago, and naturally when you pull the plug on something it goes kablooey, because that's just science. We go to Happy Harbor, and it's time for school, except for Brion, apparently. Forager is given a glamour charm that'll pass him off as a human teenager, and Violet chose for him the name Fred Bug, with two Gs. And, they, and, and since Forager, his language is like, he doesn't say I or me, he says Forager is going to go to Forager's home now. And you know how he talks, so now that he has the identity of Fred Bug, with two G's, that's how he refers to himself. Throughout the episode, it, it does get a little tiresome. It, it, is, it is cute, it is amusing, but even the most amusing things can wear you down if they're done often enough in a short amount of time. And this is like a 22 minute episode. <laughs> so he, uh, so Lucas and Megan are taking him and Violet to school while we go back to Star Labs post explosion. And Victor's injuries are pretty graphic. It's like they're pushing the limit of PG-13. And like, I, it's like, I don't want them to go a hard R. I mean, some things call for an R rating. I don't think Young Justice does. No, I, I, um, but he's like, yeah, that is, that is friggin' brutal. The other doctors are like, there's nothing we can do. But Dr. Stone's like, there's something I'm going to do. And I'm going to take this father box and I'm going to use it to heal my son like it does the parademons. And then red tendrils start wrapping around Victor and connects to the star's power cables. And he, and he locks him into that big doohickey like a cocoon. And, and then we cut to Violet and Fred um, making their introductions to the class uh, really awkward and uh, Violet's very, feeling very queasy, and maybe that's because she sensed the arrival of sweet, merciful crumb monkeys, Harper freaking row. Points deducted! The only way this character can possibly be palatable is if Greg Weissman did a nice retooling, because Greg Weissman is the only person I trust at this point. It's like, I, I I can't say I trust anyone at DC because they're run by a bunch of, you know, simpering simians. And I, <laughs> so, you know, there, there, there's hope with Weissman, but still, I, she's not a good character. And I just want to take the throttle with her. <sighs> but maybe the only reason she was chosen and... Quite frankly, there's a plethora of teenage characters that could have been chosen for this. It was because Violet chose the surname Harper. So there's a fun little back and forth between them about, I'm Harper? No, she's Harper. You know, I'm Harper. Harper is Harper. And blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, that was kind of funny. And I can understand that, you know, maybe that was a reason to bring Harper Rowe in. She served her purpose. We never mean to see her again.
the folks at Star Labs aren't getting any vitals on Victor, uh, buddy, but his dad tells him to wait, which pays off, because it starts rebuilding Vic's body into... Duh! Meanwhile, Connor is testing a newly restored bike, while Brion is trying to access uh, information on his sister from the fancy computer in uh, Connor's, you know, tool shed or whatever that is. And that's when Nightwing teleports in, basically relaying information we uh, got from previous issue that he had, that he got, uh, that she's was on Santa Prisca, but she has since been moved. And it turns into this big fight between uh, Grayson and Geoforce. And, uh, he, and Brion is just sick to death of being told to be patient. Grayson figures he really understands what everyone's doing, but Brion's just too focused on what he's lost instead of what he can become as a person. And that seems to give a realization to the young prince. So back at Star Labs, the doohickey opens, and it's a bouncing baby cyborg boy! So back at high school, uh, Fred and Violet are eating lunch outside because no one would, you know, sit with them. There wasn't a place for them to sit. No one would offer them a seat, so they go outside. <sighs> kind of... I mean, on the one hand, it might seem a little odd that there weren't any open seats and that everyone would just deny them a seat. Then again, when I was in high school, I spent most of my time in the computer lab because of certain, you know, people, like everyone not liking me because I existed. So I can kind of sympathize. And then they's like, oh, maybe we're freaks. Maybe they're treating us like freaks. And it's like, then Harper, who happens to be in the bleachers nearby, says being a freak is cool because they're cool and it's okay. And then, of course, we need her validation. And here, here's the, she calls everyone inside, everyone in there are clicky cliches. But that kind of makes Harper a cliche for me you because know, she's like, oh, she's the one that doesn't fit in and that's supposed to be why we're supposed to like her. But unfortunately, she's got years of history of being terrible. <laughs> so they lunch together. And, you know, Violet is still feeling very queasy. And it's like, oh, it must be the goulash. No, it's you, Harper. Oh. At least that's what I wish it would say. So after they're done with their lunch, Harper actually manages to be useful and tells Fred Bug with two Gs that he does not need to say with two Gs. He can just say Fred Bug. Okay. She, she managed to be useful. I didn't see it coming. We don't need her anymore. But anyway, she leaves, and uh, Fred goes back to Violet, who's still feeling very unwell, and she reveals an indigo aura, which, honestly, I can't really tell the difference between the indigo aura and her violet aura, but this aura lets her create a boom tube. And when she enters it, Fred just, you know, misses it by that much. She enters Star Labs, where Victor has awoken from uh, the cocoon, and he is not happy with how he looks. He lashes out at his dad, he uh, is tearing up the lab even more than the explosion already had, and he, f when Halo arrives, they fight a bit until, you know, she knocks him unconscious. She glows and says some magic words, I guess. And Victor goes from his cybernetics glowing purple to glowing red, which, you know, we're kind of used to with Cyborg. And it seems to have had a cleansing and calming effect on him. She doesn't think that she can heal his flesh completely, because so far all she's done is heal herself. And Vic is still angry that his, uh, basically, his future is done because of what his father did. 
and uh, he decides to leave with Halo. The murderous impulses he had may not have been him, it may have been the cybernetics, but the anger itself, yeah, that was all Vic. And so they boom tube back under the bleachers, and just as Fred had uh, gotten Miss Martian over there, and they were, so they were conveniently waiting. Uh, we go to the beach near Mount Justice, and Brion seems to be feeling better, more optimistic, as he uh, has made peace with Dick Grayson. Uh, credits over Lobo's pinky again, uh, uh, and it's it's a little deflated and um, looks like it has some boils or something on it. I, I guess that's just how Zarnians decompose. I don't know, but I do know it would make a better new character than Harper Rowe. Oh, I just can't stop myself! We got the introduction to Cyborg. It got pretty grisly. Violet and Fred, of course, are going to be like the relatable, awkward teens in a new place and uh, with their own customs and their own way of doing things. There's nothing wrong with them, but everyone treats them like they're all so weird and so forth. Which, yeah, okay, that's it. Of course, it's high school. I've complained about the character before, and maybe I should give this new version a shot. As long as Weissman doesn't end up making her this big pivotal character that does nothing, but everyone is just treating like a freaking goddess, I'll be fine. I still won't like the fact that she's in there, because it kind of validates the existence of the character in general uh, to me, which may sound a little overblown, but... Honestly, so was Batman and Robin Eternal's treatment of her. This is complete. But yeah, I'm just I'm going to try. I'm just... It, it depends on what, on what uh, Weissman does with her. It's like, if this is it, fantastic. If she shows up in another couple of episodes and she's still just a classmate to Violet and Fred, okay, fine. If she becomes Bluebird and just outdoes everyone at everything because she just don't want them. And then you'll know that James Tinney and the fourth hogtied Greg Weissman locked him in a closet and took over writing duties. Which is bad. Okay, still, despite the involvement of that character, it was a good episode. But we'll see what happens with this new development with Cyborg and... The mystery about Halo continues to uh, intrigue. It's like, now she's got a new... It's almost like Steven Universe. She's got a new power every other week. Uh, <laughs> the mystery with Halo, I think, is done very well. And uh, looking forward to more, even though you gotta wait till June. Mm, I'll see you next time. Later.